Bonjour. Bonjour. Welcome to the Bayfield High School Alternative Education Sugar Bush. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of our project and a little bit about what we do. We call Sugar Bush Iska Gamizigun. Iska Gamizigun. And part of Sugar Bush season happens at a certain time of year. And in our culture, we do have a story behind the Sugar Bush, but we don't tell our traditional stories without there being snow on the ground. So I can't share the story about Sugar Bush. What I can tell you a little bit about it was that at one time, a long time ago, we, it was said that that syrup just poured out from the trees, but something happened. Our people, our people were being lazy and were abusing that, that privilege, that gift. And so something happened to where now we got to work very hard to get that maple syrup, that sap. There's a lot of steps involved in that process. And this cultural activity is one of, one of my favorites to do with our elementary students, with our school, our high school, middle school students, because we get to see all the processes involved with how we get from sap to maple syrup. We started this project about 10 years ago. Uh, where the high school alternative education class runs a sugar bush every spring from start to finish. It starts in the fall. We talk a little bit about identifying maple trees so we can prepare for the year. Uh, we write a letter to the city of Bayfield to ask them permission to use the some trees that are only about a block from the school. We're very fortunate that the school here is about a block from a city lot that used to be a courthouse. It's an old courthouse building and is now houses the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore Visitor Center. And that lot is surrounded by beautiful, big, old sugar maples. And so we ask the city every year if we can use those trees for a sugar bush. So we take care of that in the fall. And then we do a bunch of other projects throughout the winter until we get close to that transition time, which is magical around here and, and spring is about to come. And when we get to that point, we start watching the weather very closely because we know that at some point the maple sap is gonna start to run in the maple trees. And what we're looking for on the weather forecast is we're looking for days that are above freezing and nights that are below freezing. And when that happens, that freeze and thaw process starts to drive the sap in the maple trees to begin moving. And that's when we begin to tap our trees. And before we do that, we decide on an experiment. We always try to do some type of an experiment. We might test to see which side of the tree produces the most sap, north, south, east, west. Uh, we might sometimes decide to do an experiment about identifying whether the sap is flowing more up or down. This year we did an experiment where we put taps at different heights to determine whether the it matters whether the tap is close to the ground or if it can be further from the ground or maybe it doesn't make a difference. And we haven't analyzed that data yet, but uh, we will be doing that later this spring. Then when it gets time to tap, when we see that those days are getting above freezing and nights are below freezing, we go down to the trees where we're gonna tap. The first thing we do is we do a tobacco offering to say thanks and give thanks to the trees and to give thanks to nature for supplying us with uh, the sap that we're about to use. But we wanna uh, teach we, them our first step should be offering that a say ma to that, to that tree for giving us this gift of sap that we turn into syrup. So being Danucci gay, we offer that tobacco. So and then we go down and we use a brace and a bit to drill holes in the tree and the, the, the holes are about an inch, inch and a half deep or so and about uh, maybe a quarter to a half inch in diameter. And then we put spiles in and the spiles allow the sap to flow out into either buckets or bags. We collect into buckets and so we get all of our taps in place and then we just wait and we wait for those days above freezing and nights below freezing and when we see that happening we go down and check and then we collect our sap. One of the cool things about this project is that because we're close to the school it allows all of our students K-12 to see the entire process so while the sap is being collected at the trees a lot of our elementary school classes go down and and check out the process to see what's happening so they can see the sap coming out of the trees and they can see the buckets collecting the sap. And if you've ever seen it, maple sap, when it comes out, looks like water. There's about 2% sugar in there, uh, but when it comes out, it looks like water. And it might, some people can say, say they can taste a little bit of sweetness. Um, other people say it tastes just like fresh water. Once we have enough sap, we bring it back up here. Uh, this is where we boil our sap. This is where we process it. This is a real cool location. So once we bring that up, then we put that sap into this evaporator and we fire it with wood. So there's a wood stove here. You can see the wood shed in the background over here. And 
then we simply heat it up and we boil the sap because remember what I said when the sap comes out of the trees it has about two percent sugar the rest of it is water and there's some other flavorings in there and some other particles maybe in there and what we want to do is we want to get rid of the water so that process is called distillation when you use boiling to separate things and so when we heat it up, the water boils first because water boils at a temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius. And so when it reaches that temperature, water boils away. In fact, you can still see right here, there's some steam coming up. This is almost a finished batch here, but there's a little bit of steam rising right now. So we're just finishing this very carefully, controlling the temperature because this is just about ready. So when it goes in here, it looks like water. When it comes out of here, it looks like syrup. Okay, we also, then we test it. We want to test to make sure it's ready. And there are a bunch of different ways to test it. I'll show you a couple of different ways. One way you could do it is you could just taste it, right? You could check the consistency and you could check the taste and be like, yeah, this is, this is ready. Um, sometimes when you do that, you might take it off a little too soon because it tastes so good. You end up taking it off before it's really totally finished. And if you do that um, and you bottle it, you might get a little mold in there if you haven't let it concentrate too much. So you do want to get it to the right space. So I'm going to test it with a hydrometer. It's just a little device that uh, has a has some has a certain weight and it's and a certain density. And what it's going to do is it's going to float in the syrup. So I'm going to take some of the syrup out. Ready? Here we go. Pour it in there. Look at that liquid yeah. gold. Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to let this thing float a little bit. And I can read on the hydrometer what the sugar content is and this is like right on the money i don't know if you can see it in there but this is floating right where i want it to float if i you can see these two little red lines and when i let this sink back down that top red line is floating right at the level of the syrup and that's when it tells me that this syrup is ready to go All right this is a real cool project for a couple of reasons i already talked about this cross age right that we get all of our elementary school students and middle school students and high school students to see the process and some community members come in and and a lot of our students went to the Red Cliff Early Childhood Center where they also have a sugar bush so they saw that sugar bush happen at the uh, in a, at a preschool age level there are a lot of families who do sugar bush so we've got this real cool community cultural uh, project going on that uh, is across all ages it's also also awesome because the high school students do this from start to finish it's theirs from the beginning to the end and so at the end when we're done they each get to take a bottle home uh, and then we also we also gift a lot of it we give some of it back to the city for letting us use their trees there are some neighbors here who let us use their trees and we give them some of the syrup we save some bottles so that when we have guests come into the classroom we give them a bottle of our syrup so it's this really cool project that has this long range start to finish uh, aspect to it which is real cool we also like to finish with a celebration like a, a big pancake breakfast where the high school students who worked on this project will make pancakes and use some of our syrup to celebrate the end of the season and the success of our season. So where's the pancakes? They're coming. We'll get them next week. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, love to have you come up sometime and see our process. And uh, thanks for listening to the story about our sugar bush project. We get our traditional teachings, we get the traditional, we get to tell them the traditional ways and how it's diff different now today than it was in the past on how we boil our sap down. Um, we get those exper hands-on experiences. We get different ways how many different people collect their sap. So we share those, all these things. And we also get to practice with our students the importance of putting down our tobacco because that's one of our traditional medicines and it's so important that we give thanks for if we take some from our earth our mother earth so there's a lot of significant importance to sugar bush and i'm very happy to be a part of it here at the bayfield school district Miigwech.